Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Zoya from Celia Norman. Okay, we just did a class on fragments and reticula. And as I was looking, I've seen this one. This one's been around for a while. Um, and I'm like, oh, let's see how that one is constructed. And yeah, it fits perfectly into uh, the idea of um, having a tangle that you can turn around. But, you know, I'll explain that as we go. All right. First, I'm going to draw this as, as the fragment. And that's what I did in my version of the step outs. You will find my version as well as uh, Celia's in the description section in the video. All right. Now, <laughs> the first steps makes me first step, excuse me, makes me think of cubine. Cuz what we're going to do is and you you know, pick a corner any corner and we're going to you decide how big you want it about halfway ish. And we're just going to make a smaller box in within the bigger box. All right, then Coming from, and you know, you, again, you get to decide where. That's the fun of uh, Zentangle and most tangles, you know, well, I'll, I'm going to say all tangles because whatever you do is going to be neat. It doesn't matter. Okay. So from here, we're going to go to here, but it's going to be a C-shaped curve line like that. And feel free, trace over a little bit of the end. I'm going to do... Flipping the tile around so I can have an, that beautiful curve that happens when you use the natural curve of your hand. Well, at least, you know, for the most part it does. <laughs> it's one of those where I want to say, uh, my own results vary, just depends. <laughs> All right, then we're going to, we're going to aura both of these sections. And honestly, you know, it's stopping right here. If you wanted to create a string from just this, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? It would. Okay. Now, so I'm going to come down, you know, midway here. Same idea, but I'm not going to come all the way to the end, although you could. Hmm. Not going to, but I just thought about it. That could look neat. All right. So aura-ing in there and then here. Same idea. Of course, you decide how, you know, thick or thin you want that aura to be. Now, what I decided to do in the next steps of, of my version is I, I label them with the number of the step. But on the next couple, I put uh, decorate in parentheses because from this point, you can have as much fun as you want. You know what? I Well, no, 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 no. This one I'm going to do as... The step, what did I do with my, there it is. <laughs> I think I just had this graphic one in my hand. All right, I'm going to do this one as the uh, step out says, just because I like to do that. And what Celia had us doing is filling in this section. Now, I will tell you this. <laughs> one way that uh, I that I use to decide how I might decorate it because there are so many options, right? And that is, well, is there a place that I need to adjust? And I'm, I'm looking going, well, this is thinner than this side. So if I wanted to adjust anything, you know, and then you have to work to not mess it up any further. <laughs> but you can just do that since it's being filled in anyway. As long as you're careful. And that's me talking to me because I went a little bit wild there for a minute. But that evened it out a little nicer. All right, and then we'll fill in this section. What's nice about having this as the decoration, you know, is I, I like the high contrast. And it seems like, well, I could be wrong. I probably am. But it seems like, in my mind at the moment, <laughs> that 
um, we don't necessarily have a lot of high contrast tangles. There are always ways that you can make it high contrast, but I like this for the fact that it is high contrast. Now in the, oh, just to, by the way, in the description section, and I'm just going to tidy this up right here. Um, you will see two links and I'm going to, I will link directly to Celia's uh, blog where this is located, but also I mean, because I found it on Tangle Patterns and I want to at least uh, provide a link back there because Lin, uh, Linda provides such wonderful information. Um, but I also like you to take a look at her little, the little thumbnail, um, her work on this. And it's just, it's really, really neat. And, uh, and it's like, I like it. it. It makes me think of like an owl eye or something like that. But, um, cause she, uh, she did more aura-ing and filling in. It just looks really, really neat. Okay. So we have that now. We're going to use a, uh, a regular grid. The idea of reticula is, um, it's the name for the odd shaped grid patterns. And what we would do with them, and just by the way, I mean, I did a class, there are others that, that uh, provide information and, you know, classes and things on uh, fragments and reticula. It's in the Primer book by Rick and Maria. And I mean, the idea is you take a, a, a fragment and they have a whole, a whole several pages of ideas and you can put it in either the same way in each section or you can turn it. It's up to you. You know what I'm thinking? Oh no, that's what I did. Okay, in my version, <laughs> wait, wait, let me let me do that. That might be more interesting. No, um, I did where I have the boxes going to the outside. Because sometimes what I'll do is I'll pick a, pick a direction, and then do it in this in this box. Then turn the tile, do it the same direction in this box, same direction in this box, and so on. But that's what I did in my version of the step out. So maybe I shall do it differently. Let's do that. Okay, let's start it with the, we'll do it this way. And you know what, honestly, if you get this box first, you could fill that, you could fill that section in and then do, you know, the curve line. You at least have to have the box in there so that way, because uh, this part hinges on that, right? And I'm just going to do them. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to put all of the boxes in the corner. And have this radiating out. And sometimes, I mean, depending on the tangle, it can get eyeball confusing, as I like to call it. So sometimes what you might want to do is, uh, like this, I'm doing the whole tangle in each box versus what I might normally do, which is one step at a time in each box, just, you know, for that meditative aspect. Just depends on the tangle. And apparently just what I'm either thinking about or maybe just because I'm not thinking at all. <laughs> okay. And then we have this. And it, then it's up to you. How do you want to decorate it? Um, I'm going to do something. I want to, I want to disguise these lines in here. And so I am going to start right here. Oh, I should have started from, oh, there we got it to fit in from that center line. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Normally, what? well, I'll say normally, obviously not normally because I didn't do it there. One good idea is to start it from that, you know, the center line. So that way you are um, assured of a certain distance and then work the other way. 
I just like to say, sometimes the pen just wants to do what the pen wants to do. <laughs> oh. All right. And then I'm thinking... I'm, I'm like, I, just because the idea popped into my head, I'm going to put some orbs in here. Get one under there. And here's another thought. As you're doing something like this, if you're not, a, if you don't have it all planned out in your head, um, you like before or as you're doing it and you're just not sure this is one of the things that I do and it's like okay I'm gonna do this I don't know if I want to do it here yet I'm gonna do it diagonal the same pattern because maybe I want to change it up on the other side and that way if you you know you get done doing this it's like oh I don't and you ch you've changed your mind then it's a lot easier because, it, well, it ends up looking like you meant it that way if you do these opposites. I have got to redefine that. Look at how bumpy that is. And some of my little orbs, too. I always like to fill in the gaps. You don't have to, but it gives a nice touch. When we do that, you can see before and after. Helps if I'm not being quick and sloppy yeah so my orbs do that but you know what um oh i think i have an idea on how to fix that besides could just thicken that up in there like redefine <laughs> like that see how that took care of it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. redefine that's a magic it's a magic trick might not be perfect, but it certainly helps. Okay. So, could be like that. And then, you know what? Then you're like, oh, you know what? I don't feel like doing that again. So, I'm going to do big orbs here in the middle. Because it's our tangle, and we can do what we want with it. I like that. And I have some other ideas. And as it, well, you know, let me, let me, let's, let's talk about shading for a quick moment here. And let's go back to here. One thing I'm thinking because this is kind of tucked. It gives the impression, right, that it's tucked underneath here. And so, oh heck, why not? Let's just do the whole box. First I was thinking no, and then I changed my mind really quick. Oh, look at how that just pops that out. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Then, then what else? Because I'm thinking if you were doing this in a whole, with a, you know, if you had a bunch of them, that would look neat because it, it that layered look is really cool. And, well, let's just, part of me is thinking, could go along these outsides. Let's do that, and we'll create a little bit of a shadow box effect. And, you know, and then picturing this in a bigger grid, right? And, yes, I'm going right over that. And I'm putting quite a bit on because I am. Because you could go around the edges. That's what I was thinking, but that, but this this overpowered the other thought, so I let it win. 
Oh, see, that's neat. And it kind of uh, recesses this whole section underneath, and that is kind of neat. All right. And I don't know if I want to do that with this. Hmm. Oh, but you know what? Okay, here's what we'll do. Even though I haven't quite finished. Let's do this. Let's highlight. So this part is going to go down. I think. And we're going to put all of this around here. The only other thing I was thinking about doing is maybe disguising this. You'll are you'll see what I've already done because it's on the front uh, front uh, uh the beginning of this. <laughs> It's the picture. That's so hard because I'm like, oh, what, what shall I do? And you're like, well, we know what you're going to do. <laughs> We've already seen it. <sighs> All right, now let's do that inside. So we'll get this little, sorry, this little frame that pops out. Just because I thought that might be, that's kind of fun and interesting. And I think what I, well, like I said, you already know. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to put lines because I'm going to disguise all of those and then still shade it the same way here. Um, I think with those lines, I think that will look neat. Or maybe just the whole thing. I guess I will see. You already know. All right, so as I'm doing that. If you have enjoyed this, and I hope you have, please click on the like button. And if you liked it enough to see more, I hope that you would uh, think about subscribing to the channel. Um, in the description section, I mentioned links to uh, the step outs. And then also uh, below that is my link tree where you can find all of my all of my links social media um, and places that I post for classes uh, website Facebook page everything Ooh, you know what I'm all of a sudden wait no that won't work will it I'm gonna try something before I finish it um, if you are interested in tangling with me and a bunch of other tangle addicts, we have an amazing time every Thursday, actually two times on Thursday. It's uh, 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. That's not going to work. What was I thinking? Uh, I was thinking to alternate. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'm just going to finish them. <laughs> I had a thought. I'm like, oh, doing every other one. That could be interesting. Sometimes these thoughts come to us, and then it's like, okay, next time I'll try to remember to do that. Um, but anyway, yeah, all of the links, you know, if, if you're interested in classes, you can. Uh, there's places listed there where you can follow me, uh, where I post them. It does not mention specifically Facebook, uh, but if you follow my page, I do post the classes there as well. And if you'd like to be a part of a Tangle Addicts community, the Tangle Addicts community, I should say, uh, there is a link for that as well. It's a private group. And if you're interested and if you click that link, you will find that it asks you four questions and you need to answer those in order to gain entry to the group just to let you know because I hate clicking decline but I think that those are I don't know bots or you know people just change them they're like I don't I don't like these questions you're asking they're nothing it's nothing serious it just sets the tone for the group and some expectations and things like that and it has really helped so that's why they're there all right Yeah, I'm, whoops, yes, I'm liking this. Okay. But I might shade it a little bit differently because it is becoming too busy. 
We shall see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I might highlight the... I might still do the outside. But I think I need to highlight these just because. Helps to direct our eyes. If something gets to be looking too busy, just take a look at where else you can shade. And if there's, you know, something kind of getting lost or something that you feel like you want to, you know, bring up, then that is what you should do. All right. Let's just see how half of this looks. And... So part of me was thinking, well, I could just finish this. But, you know, if you're watching, if you're enjoying watching the shading, because the shading seems to be the thing that gets the most, uh, or a lot of the questions, I should say. I'm not sure if I'm digging it so far. Let's just see what it looks like when it's done. But I do, we do get a lot of questions, or I see a lot of questions and a lot of uh you know, not sure what to do about shading. So I do like to, you know, keep this in here because because uh, it helps. And I, it's part of the tangle. All right, and let's just get this one last side. And I have another idea. Oh yeah, well it's not too bad, but what I think I'm going to do, uh, let's do this. Inside. That helps, so let's do the outside too. It is a good idea to have a thicker nibbed pen, and especially just having the graphic one. I could just fill that in as well, couldn't I? And I, this is why I like to do things in stages, because it's like, okay, that was an idea. Uh, it wasn't wasn't hitting me as liking it so there's always this last and then too I can fix that little line <laughs> sometimes having a little contrast uh-huh just makes the difference so there we go I'm I'm liking that a lot more now all right well thank you for sticking with me on this I've mentioned everything so there we go yeah. All right. Again, thank you so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.